I think if you look at decisions like this, this is a global company. They're responding to changes in the market, changes in technology, changes in regulation. Um, the situation now in 2019 is different from when they were considering that decision in 2015 and then into 2016. So they've responded to that. But as they said, undoubtedly, the uncertainty that Brexit brings means it's very difficult to commit long term for you know, a, a model change. Well, in 2016, after the referendum, Nissan committed to uh, the building the X Trail here and indeed the new Qashqai model due to assurances that they'd received from Greg Clark and Theresa May. We still don't know what those assurances were, do we? And I'm not sure that there was a, uh, any assurances were, were anything more than what was said at the time, which was a commitment by the government to try and ensure the UK and the UK automotive industry in its entirety was in as competitive place as possible. Remember, we're still in Europe, and so any potential support given to any company is still subject to state aid rules. So that decision would have gone to Brussels to, to, to scrutinise, and I'm sure they would have scrutinised it, and they basically said nothing to see here. So do you think the government has in any way failed Nissan then? I don't think it's a question of failing Nissan. I think you know, the, you know, the government, the conversations we have in government, they're trying to support this industry in what is incredibly difficult times. We are really concerned. I mean, the potential to leave the European Union with no deal would be catastrophic. Make no bones about it. This sort of decision does bring on that ever-increasing sense of uncertainty. And as we've seen, investment is declining. What about the money that the government's already given Nissan, training grants and so forth? I mean, there's speculation this lunchtime that they'll be allowed to keep that, regardless of this X-Trail decision. Does that surprise you? Well, I think the decision the, the, that was made and announced back in 2016 was for three models, commitment to Qashqai, which is by far the biggest volume model coming out of Nissan, um, but also Duke. Uh, as well as Xtrail. So if you're taking the total package, um, it was a significant and remains a significant investment. I think Nissan have been very clear that it is not, you know, they don't expect job losses in, in the short term, but clearly what this is preventing is the additional jobs we hoped was going to come to the UK, and we hope this isn't the beginning of a long-term trend. Well, it's interesting you mentioned the possibility, once we're outside the EU, of uh, not having to play by EU state aid rules. I mean, would you expect, under those circumstances, the government to be a bit more generous with the money that it gives the industry? It's not a, it's not a free fall. Even if you move under to WTO, which we do not want, because that would produce significant costs for the industry, you still have to play by the rules, and that means that, that still governs the amount of support you can give any industry. We don't generally look for support in terms in, in its broader scale. We, we are hugely competitive. We have been incredibly competitive over the last five, six years coming out of the recession. Um, basically trading and winning investment. And as long as we've got a level playing field, then we can succeed. Do you worry about the long-term future of this plant? Uh, not so much the long-term future. What I do worry is you know, what happens. We don't know what our trading conditions are going to be like for the long term. We don't know what they're going to be like in less than two months' time. With that uncertainty, it's hard to attract that investment. And when you don't attract the investment, you don't increase your productivity, your competitiveness, and it's ever harder to win that next new model coming in. So do you think this decision poses bigger questions for the, the wider car making industry in the UK? Well, the wider car marketing industry is, you know, is, is on the receiving end, like the rest of the global industry, of some severe headwinds. You've had a, a drop for the first time in, in many, many years in the Chinese car market. US is flat, Europe is flat, the UK is down. Um, put that together, and, the, and as well as technological changes, which require huge amounts of investment. You know, at a time when we need that investment, we're trying to focus on survival and making sure this industry can remain competitive in the future. I'd rather be here talking about future technology investment, but instead we're looking at, you know, what is the future relationship going to be with our biggest market in 50-something days' time?